at first, you know, it's like, yeah, it'd be really cool to do that, but you never really know how things are going to go. Like when you actually start playing together and stuff and, you know, being drinking buddies is one thing, but like, you know, to be able to work together to make music is a totally different thing. And uh, it, fortunately everything worked out great. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in our old friend, Johnny Kelly of a million bands, Ooh. but specifically to talk about <laughs> the brand new super group in every sense of the word, I am. How are you doing, brother? Good. How are you? Good to see you. I'm so glad to see you, man. It has been a few years since yeah. we saw you in part. Wow. I got to see, I saw you with Danzig last year. I just talked about Aftershock offline, a killer performance, and you are so busy with all the things and all the bands. But uh, the whole metal world is talking about this I Am project, right? A uh, new single is out now, Dreams Always yeah. Die With The Sun on Corpse Paint Records. Shout out to Corpse Paint Records. Go get your singles and singles and single CDs and shirts <laughs> and other merch that they have. That's amazing. A super big new fan of that label, but a big fan already. But yeah, man, just to, to dial it back to zero for a second, obviously you and Kenny are like peas and carrots. You guys work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're attached. Or you're in each other's, you know, DNA and thoughts, probably read each other's minds. But like, how did you guys get that's, together? That's a scary you? thought. It is a scary thought. But how did <laughs> you guys, and we, and we love Kenny, you know that. But uh, how do we, how do you guys get together with Kurt and Todd? Well, we've all been friends for a really long time. Like, you know, we've all known each other, you know, like I met Kirk, shit, probably like right after I joined Typo. You know, like that's going on 30 years now. And uh, so we've been friends, you know, throughout the years and stuff, always crossing paths and, you know, hanging out. And uh, and then Drew had started uh, Corpse Paint Records and he'd been talking about this for a long time. He's like, oh, you know, it'd be so cool. You know, like if if you, you guys got together with uh, with Kirk and, you know, Todd and, you know, you did something. And then when Drew started his label, that was like one of the things he was like, we're going to do it. And we were all down for it. You know, we were all into the idea and stuff. And he he put us he, he got us all to Florida now about two months ago. And, uh, you know, dreams always die with the sun is the end result of that of that jam and uh really we ju we just got into a room together started working on the song recorded it the next day and uh then it got mixed uh, jay rushton mixed it and uh that's that's where we're at now and it was you know like we you know, at first you know, it's like, yeah, it'd be really cool to do that, but you never really know how things are going to go. Like when you, when you actually start playing together and stuff and, you know, being drinking buddies is one thing, but like, you know, to be able to work together, you know, to, to make music is a totally different thing. And uh, it, fortunately everything worked out great. Right on. It is like the perfect amalgam of styles of the guys. And, and, and Jay, by the way, has like one of the best sets of ears on earth. Yeah. And anything he touches is almost always beautiful, right? He's such a great well, Let's guy. hope this isn't, you know, this doesn't end his streak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I doubt it highly. Uh, I'm sure it's going to continue. And then hopefully he'll work on the future uh, release as well. That's coming. Yeah, that, I guess that'll be the goal. You know, like, yeah. a, you know, we're, we're getting together in a couple of weeks in uh, New Orleans and we're going to try to come up with some more material, you know, come up with some other stuff. I'm sure, and, I'm uh, sure you will. Every, I know this for a fact. I don't know about drummers and beats and patterns, but guitar players always, they, they say, oh, I don't have any ideas. And then they always have some backup riffs that they never use that are. In yeah. Reserve. Well, that, I mean, that's how this started. That's how this song started. Also, it wasn't like we just went into the room completely cold. I mean, I did, I, I didn't hear anything. Nobody sent me anything. It was like, you know, it was like, well, you know, we're getting together in a couple of days. You know, anybody have any ideas? You know, send me something so I could like get prepared some way. Like, oh no, you know, Kirk Kirk likes to write in the studio. And uh Kenny was like, Yeah, I have an idea, you know, I have a little bit of something. And then that was it. Nobody sent me anything I didn't hear. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't able to prepare for anything. So they, you know, literally if you see like the like one of the promo shots of us in the rehearsal studio, you see my suitcase right next to the drum set. Yes, yeah. It's I like, just I I, what is in that case? It's close. My my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> 
awesome. That'll also be for sale on Course Paint Records autographed and everything. They, they can be available for a price. We'll get some Kenny socks, <laughs> some some Kirk sweatbands and shirts. Hilarious. Well, I, so I went literally straight from the airport to the rehearsal studio, and then they were like, "Here's what we've been working on." And then we, you know, and then the song came together and, you know, we, you know, we came up with the arrangement and stuff and, you know, like whatever, you know, still throwing around ideas, you know, like stuff was still being worked on. Even while we were tracking, we're like, well, what about this? What if we try this? And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we got the drums done the following day and then Kenny and Kirk and Todd stayed back another day. I had to leave. I had a, I forget where I was going. I think I had a choir riot show. You had a something. gig somewhere. <laughs> what yeah, I, I, I did. I had to leave at like six in like six in the morning or something like that. And uh, and then they they finished the song, and then I like I was hearing it back. You know, like they were sending me you know like roughs of what had been going on while they were there, and and I was you know like even while, like while we were rehearsing, I'm really not getting the whole concept of of the song because it's we're still coming up with ideas. You know, Kenny still. You know, coming up with vocal melody line, trying to come up with, a, you know, like lyrics. And so I had a basic idea of what we were doing. But my curiosity was peaked just like anybody else's as far as what the finished song was going to sound like, because I really had no idea. <laughs> right on. And I know you're in a typical situation where you might do some pre-pro and you have demos to work. Yeah, for you, go in. you might be a one or, you know, a one take lay it down kind of dude. I believe that is the case. But obviously Sometimes. When, you're, <laughs> when you're writing it on the spot, though, harder to do. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like uh, I've been trying to learn this as, as I go on. You know, as the years go on, but like, you know, songwriting and, you know, like uh, trying to make drums fit into a song, you know, not just, you know, not just creating a drum track where it's like, hey, look at me, you know, whatever. It's, you're trying to make the song better. And, you know, a lot of times I would like, you know, follow, uh, follow the guitar player. I've always had a habit of following the guitar lines in songs when coming up with new stuff. So I try to see the bigger picture of a song as it's being developed so it's like you know maybe uh, you know it's like when you don't hear the vocal lines and stuff and you just hear like you hear just the melody line in, in the other instruments you think like, oh i could leave something here i could leave this open or like this will be something you know that's a perfect spot to do some whatever some kind of like drum fill or something like that and then when you hear the vocals come back on it and then there's this drum fill going on while there's vocals and stuff and they're like you know stepping on each other's toes and it's like bad idea you know so then it's a, and then you try to like you try to do the opposite of that where you leave space and it'd be like oh this will be a good space you know this this is a good spot for something else you know maybe like a keyboard part or a guitar part, a guitar lick or, or a different vocal or something like that. And then sometimes it'll come back. Then it just becomes dead space. I'm just like, well, nobody. <laughs> so when you're doing stuff on the fly, a lot of that stuff to try to see the big picture is, is the challenge in, uh, in making, you know, creating new songs. And so I, I try to do that when I'm when I'm coming up with drum parts and it's, it's frustrating because you don't have that, you don't have that time to like really get into a song and work on it and like really develop it. You know, you just pretty much go on by instinct and you, you like, you know, you put on a helmet and you know, you hope for the best. And, right on. You know, and that has a 50, 50 chance of like working out. Sometimes <laughs> it'll be great. You know, the first thing that you came up with, with be like, all right, yeah, it's great. All right. Well, that's a, that's a take. Thanks. And then other times it's like, you're so far off and is, and then it's like, you know, you have that frustration, like I could have done this, I could have done that, you know, it could have been this, or, you know, and then you should have, could have, would have, and what's done is done. <laughs> right. I want, yeah. I mean, like if I didn't know that whole, and thank you for sharing, if I didn't know that whole story, man, like it sounds like a really tight pocket. Todd is doing the Todd thing. He's a really yeah. underrated bassist that always has been. And he's kind of semi-retired. So this is very special to have him come out with Kirk. Yeah, it's and great. I mean, he, he's so much fun to hang out with. So it's like, like really, that was like the whole motivation of it was to go see, like, you know, go hang out with Kenny, Kirk, Todd, and Drew, you know, for, for you know, a couple of days. It was like perfect excuse to go. <laughs> so. Of course, go see, get some Florida time. We did like a live reaction when it, the song went live on Spotify. Me and oh, okay. Cal Figlo, right? Who's doing publicity for you guys. She's awesome. Look her up. Mm -hmm. And we heard the track for the first time together. I waited. I could have heard it early, but I waited. 
I was like, I want to be fully surprised and hear it the first time. Dude, <laughs> let's talk about Kenny. Kenny's vocals are unbelievably great on this. My jaw hit the floor. I said it like 10 times. I probably sounded ridiculous. I was like, I can't believe these vocals. Oh my God. Like it was <laughs> so good. And like, I thought the last Silver Tomb album was like the Silver Tomb full length was like amazing and a big step forward for him from anything else. But this is even more like this is he harmonized with himself. He carried this whole thing. That whole ending refrain is suit like S tier stuff. Like whatever's coming next from that dude is going to be insane. Like, you know, you I, heard I think it's, it. it's just, he's just, I think he's, you know, just really coming into his own as far as like, you know, being the primary songwriter and, and, the, and the, you know, the, the main vocalist in the band, you know, and like when we, you know, in typo where he was like, you know, his vocals were like, you know, a side, you know, to complement what, Peter was doing, Peter was the main focal point. And, uh, you know, but now I think he's like, you know, he's just coming into his own. And, and I, you know, with the, uh, with the next Silver Tomb record, like he, he really, he really outdid himself on some of the stuff that, that he, that, that, that he came up with this record. The songwriting is a whole lot stronger on this record than the last one. And uh, I, I can't wait for it to be done. You know, I mean, it's like Chinese democracy, but it's it's getting there. <laughs> Not exactly a million dollars spent on it or millions of dollars spent on it. Something like no, no, it, a it fraction of that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, it turns out in retrospective, that album's awesome. And when J Guns currently plays those songs live, they sound amazing and fresh. And it's like hearing a new Guns again. Like even, even though I you know, remember like, when the record came out. In their defense... You know, it, it didn't matter what that record sounded like because the expectations were so high. You know, it, it could, you know, like you said, it, it's aged well. You know, it's a it good really record. And, uh, but it didn't matter. It could have been the greatest yeah. record ever. Yeah. And, it, and it wouldn't have met the expectation of waiting so long for the record. Welcome to our new podcast. Which is unfortunate. It's unfortunate for, you know, for them. Yeah. I don't think Axel listens to critics even at this level. And even back then, I don't think he. I don't, yeah, I, I I don't think it's much probably of immune to all the barbs. <laughs> uh, I saw them a couple years ago. They were terrific. So I don't give a shit. And uh, yeah, I, I've, seen, I've seen them a few times. Well, I play in Hookers and Blow with Dizzy. Yeah, so I, Dizzy, I have an in. You have an in. You have an in. <laughs> um if they ever need a backup to frank they should be yeah, calling you and, and they're you know and they're phenomenal live yeah, right like it, it is it's an amazing show so yeah, i'll definitely okay. see him uh this fall at one of the festivals for sure i was going to say welcome to my new podcast with johnny about when we talk about other bands but um let me answer you a question just a, a technical question about drumming right so like obviously look you play in a lot of bands you do a lot of recordings drummers don't do a lot of guest spots as much as vocalists or guitar players lead guitarists and stuff right but like when you go from project to project you like this is my drum sound for danzig because that's what people are used to hearing the danzig sound and danzig also by the way lays down drum tracks does demos writes riffs writes the songs and ranges riot has their own you know Rest in peace, Frankie. Riot has their own amazing yeah. sound. Do you go like to like a different tuning? Like, oh, this is like a, a little more a different new I mean, project. Let me try to match the vibe with the drum sound. Do you change from? Is that even a thing? Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of consideration for it. You know, like there's certain like you know, you know like it, it really depends on the song itself. And uh, like, you know, if something calls for like, you know, big open drum sound, which I prefer, like, you know, I prefer that big open airy, you know, like big drums, lots of presence in the mix. And, uh, you know, sometimes the, the song doesn't call for that. So you, you got to do something that really works for the song. And uh, but I think like, you know, like when people ask me to play on something or whatever, like, you know, to be a part of something they know me as a certain kind of drummer. So they're expecting that kind of like vibe in my playing, like, you know, to, to come out, like to have me play on a song, whatever. And then I'm starting to try, I'm trying to play like Neil Peart. That that's not really what they were. That's not what they were like buying. <laughs> you know, like they, they wanted a certain kind of feel that I like the way that, you know, like what I would bring to the table would people know me for that that's I try to do that to you know to an extent it's not like I'm trying to like force myself force the way that I play into a certain song you know just to you know just to make sure that it sounds like me or whatever no it's it's it, like I said earlier it's about the song 
and so like whatever I could do to try to make that song better is really what's that that's what's most important to me nice you know, he is a former yeah. bassist I love talking to drummers more than anybody else <laughs> almost because I get to get some insights into the you know sort of the rhythm section that I don't think a lot of people talk about but it's, really it's it's you know it's I don't want to say like it's the most important part of the song, but it's like the found it is the foundation of what the song is built on. And if the foundation isn't good, you, your house is only as good as your foundation. Nice. You know, if the foundation is already crumbling, you're not going to be able to build a good house on it. So, so I try I try to keep that in mind. You know, like I, I don't like to play like lead drums. <laughs> I'm not a lead Some people drummer. do. Some people do, and there are some drummers following the guitar riffs and not taking yeah. the time. But it's and really, it's, just, it, you know, again, it comes it comes down to playing for the song, and that's that's the most important part. So, like, if, if the part calls for, you know, like doing something that's a little bit more standout than basically, like, you know, just holding things down, then you do that. And if it, if it calls for just, you know, you know, keep your mouth shut, look straight ahead at the road, and, you know, just drive – that's what you do if, they, if that's what that's what the song calls for and it's you know a lot of times you know it's it, usually like you know like that's what that's what makes things work you know like a like with songwriting like usually there's a focal point in the song you know like at, at any given moment whether it's the vocal line like you know singing in the verse or the guitar solo or something like that you know, it's like everybody say like everybody's in a line on stage. And then there's that moment where one guy steps out, everybody else stays back. That person comes to the back of the line. Another person steps to the front to be the focal point. That's how I that's how I approach like working on a song like and trying to find my place to support all that while they all take turns being the being the focal point. Right on. I had a fun interview a couple of years ago with uh, Matt Byrne of Hatebreed, right? And he was like, you know, everybody thinks of me as just like double bass and then ping right. and the breakdown part. He's <laughs> like, when he's home practicing, he just practices like old Van Halen stuff. And you mentioned Rush before, Neil, and I know Charlie Benante just does a ton of, you know, Rush stuff to warm up yeah. and get loose. I mean, honestly, I'm not a Rush fan. <laughs> right. Like I I saw them when I was 15 years old and like, you know, like when I first started playing, it was like, it was like, you know, rite of passage. It was like, Oh, you play drums. You got to like Neil Peart. He's the greatest, you know, whatever. And I did. And I did like, like some of the records and then I saw them live and I, I was 15 and I thought they were incredibly boring. And, <laughs> but I was 15, you know, in my defense, I was 15 and I just wasn't blown away by it. And then I, my taste just started changing. I wasn't really into like, you know, the proggy kind of stuff. And I was, you know, like Motley Crue kind of changed a lot of that, you know, for better or worse, it, it, it did. <laughs> Tommy's a hell of a drummer. I had a similar experience. My first concert, like big rock concert, I was 15 and I saw a rush in Kansas at the garden. And also I was like blown away. And then my, ta my taste started to change into like thrash metal. And more yeah, that metal was like yeah, Metallica was a another game changer, and right. then I started getting into all like you know like the thrash metal and stuff, and that's when I met Kenny, and then we were start we started playing together, and we were playing like you know thrash metal, speed metal kind of stuff, lots of double kicks, and you know, and then and then my taste changed again. The appetite for destruction came out and changed everything to totally changed the trajectory of like you know where I was going, where I was headed, you know, hmm. and then I, I I started getting more. I went backwards, like, you know, more towards, you know, classic rock and stuff, sure. which I always did like, you know, along with, you know, like with the other changes of, you know, like with growing up and, you know, discovering, you know, getting away from my dad's record collection and starting my own. Mm. Well, if I and, tried uh, to get into my dad's record collection, it was all like jazz and stuff. I could never play. I never had the ear good enough to do the Charles my Mingus dad, and Jocko, my, dad, but... my dad was a huge like Beatles and Stones fan. Got me into Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, shit, uh, Led Zeppelin, and uh, he he got me into Kiss. You know, and uh, and then after you know, so then I started getting into those other bands, and then you know, coming back to you know like, like the classics and stuff. Uh, and then I joined Typo and then that changed to change the trajectory again and, you know, doing different things, you know, discovering different types of music and stuff and taking all like these, these things and incorporating it into what I was doing. And, uh, but yeah, it always went back to that, you know, that classic rock, you know, feel and it was able right to on. put that into, 
you know, the different kinds of music that I was playing. Word. I, I've asked nearly every typo question possible to you and Kenny, <laughs> but I will say one thing I do want to just shout out briefly is I'm super stoked on the new Dead Again vinyl reissue that's coming out. There's been a lot of uh, the Nuclear Blast has done a lot of nice stuff with that. There was a really cool AI video for world. It was weird to see like AI Peter. <laughs> yeah, um, it was. It was, little, it was. It was a little strange, and it, like when it first started happening, I really had no idea what it was. It was like oh, there's this AI video that like, you know, like a, we're doing an AI video and I really had no idea what to expect. You know, I just knew that it would be some kind of like a animation, you know, but to say, you know, I have no, I'm really not well versed in AI and I guess it's a new, you know, medium for everyone. And, uh, but there was like a couple of things and I was like, hmm, I was like, wait a second, you know, like why does Jim Morrison have a guitar in his hand? <laughs> nice oh my god that's yeah. so funny and i just i i thought it was just like maybe some kid was doing it and using ar for like you know the graphics and stuff i had no idea that it would like you know like the way that it, it like composes the whole thing it does the visual and the, uh, you know i had no idea how it works so i was just like it's like tell the kid to fix that <laughs> right somebody human has to come in and uh, like edit the machine yeah, I, I, I was clearly showing my age as this was happening. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, and then you never know what the source is, like the source is everything or anything that any, every, yeah. photo, every image ever, like who knows? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I saw Terminator. I'm still kind of scared. There's no fate but what we make. You know what I'm it saying? Is kind of, it is scared kind of judgment similar. Days, though. Um, just as we wind this down, because I want to give you back your day, man. Uh, so going back down south, work on some new songs, possible EP or album, see how far you guys get. Yeah, that's that's the goal. That's the goal. You know, like, you know, like that was, uh, I guess that was the, you know, the, the test run, so to speak. And uh, everybody had a blast. We all had a lot of fun being together. And it was like, it was a cool working environment, you know. So we were hanging out, having a lot of fun, and we were making music at the same time. And it was, you know, that's win, 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 you know, right across the board. That's all, that's all sevens, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we're gonna get together, uh, you, know, you know, you know, I have a pretty busy schedule this summer and so does Kirk. And, uh, you know, so we're gonna try, you know, to get as much done as, he, as we can while we're all in the room t together. and. Uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And, uh, but the goal is to have something put out this year. All right, later this year. And then hopefully, maybe we, I don't know if it's possible for you guys to coordinate enough to play some shows or a show. Even. That'd be great. Love you to know, see you guys that would, that would be tour. awesome. You know, but, you know, that's kind of putting the, you know, the carriage before the horse. We need a record. <laughs> right on. And yeah, and you like, yeah, of course you need a whole, at least an EP, if not a whole record, but unless you, we're doing all kiss covers and we're going to sprinkle a couple of our own songs I, in there. I totally think that'd be different. fun. I want to, I want to hear Winstein, you know, shock me with his cookie monster, <laughs> Tom Carvel voice. I want him to do lead I vocals would, on some kiss. I've been working on, I, I finished the drum for the for the record uh, Patri the next patriarchs and black record and and we do a lot of covers and like you know some of the covers like you know we just put them out like you know it's not on a record or anything we just put them out on youtube and like you know whatever uh spotify and and uh we did a kiss cover and i was like i want either kirk or kenny to sing on it I'm and i, I think, that'll be great i think that that kirk would be the guy and i, I sent them the song and i never heard back from anybody so i don't know if they like it or not but i was like oh no you, i was like i want one of you two to sing on this <laughs> right on and then you have uh tons of stuff with quiet riot and danzig hopefully yeah. not fair danzig, danzig i'm really not danzig doesn't have a lot going on he's he's got a show this week and uh they're playing in poland and finland yesterday Okay. I, I was talking to Steve yesterday and uh and they have a uh, right Car Rockfest is is doing that. And then they have they have a few dates in August, which I'm, I I can't do either. So uh, okay. I, believe, I believe Carl is doing that as okay. well. Well he's and, a good he's a good fit and uh yeah, I hope, good guy, you know, good I, I guy, always, drummer. I always feel like every dancing tour is the last dancing tour. I hope not. I know he's done so it, did I. I'm not a big fan of <laughs> <laughs> along probably like twenty years ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were so many times where he was like, That's it. I don't want to tour anymore. I'm done. You know, I'm over it. 
and uh and then you know then it would be like you know another tour would get you know announced and be like well, well what happened you know like we're just well you know but... <laughs> and uh so now you know now like this one the last tour that he has uh, that he just announced with the you know the 35th anniversary of the first yeah. record behemoth and twin temple and midnight what a yeah. stacked lineup by the way like some of the best modern bands and then the whole <laughs> classic Danzig set so I'm surprised behemoth's doing it I was yeah I was, I, uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that I wonder if they will tone down their wild stage show right because you know I'm I hope sure, not I'm sure I hope not either but I'm sure Glenn <laughs> doesn't want anybody upstaging him you know for sure I'm I think Glenn, that kind of, Glenn's kind of past that I think you think okay <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think he's past that okay you know like I, uh, uh steve said nothing but super positive nice great things about working with glenn he was like guys treated me like great my whole career yeah, yeah. and he's easy to work with as long as you know what you know what he expects right you know and and, and a lot of you know most of the time he's pretty clear right but like working in the studio with him and stuff like that he'd be like oh like he's like you know like like he would always tell me give me like three three uh descriptions for drums be like play like play like bonham or play like bill ward and play like ACDC, which was ACDC. Yeah, ACDC was the simple one. Keep it yeah. simple, stupid. Just, you know, just do that. And I would get more frustrated because, uh, like, you know, going back to, you know, like we would do, we wouldn't really do any pre production. Everything was like, you know, on the fly. It was like you go to the recording studio, you had no idea what you were recording that day. And then he would, like, you know, he would show Tommy the riff, Tommy would show me the riff of what we were doing. He'd be like, all right, it goes from this part into this part into this part. All right, go. Or play it like ACDC. And then you would like, you know, you would do things, you know, a couple of measures and, you know, you try different things or whatever. And, and it'd be like, it'd be like, all right, that's cool. And, you know, like, and I would do like passes, multiple passes, playing the parts and try like different things, like different feels, different fills and stuff. And it was like, like basically like creating a library for him to pick and choose from. And be like, all right, I like that. We'll use that. Don't use that, you know. And then I'd hear the song back, you know, a few months later. And he was like, you want to hear a new song? And I'll hear it. And I'll be like, like who played drums on that? <laughs> He'd be like, that's you. I was like, that's not me. He goes, it's, it's definitely you. You were there. <laughs> that's great. And, of course, Tommy is uh, Tommy Victor, Tommy Prong there. Yeah. Uh, another favorite of those cults, just like you. Johnny, man, it's always a pleasure to see you. Happy to support anything you're doing. Best of luck. I appreciate it. Quiet Thanks. Riot Dates, and we're super excited for I Am and anything else you guys will do. We will definitely be have our ears and eyes peeled for more new music. Uh, as I said, of course, Paint Records, shout out to them. CD, uh, single, flexi disc, cassette. I think I bought all of them. Uh, a yeah, vinyl a I heard is coming. <laughs> That's vinyl, awesome. A vinyl, yeah, I bought them. Yeah. I had to buy them. I had to. I needed. Did you to. see the? Did you see the Dead Again cassette? I did. It was scary. <laughs> I was like, "Don't do it, bro." I figured if I need something autographed, I'll just come find you guys someday. But I don't need it that bad. I was like, the collector in me is <laughs> I battle with the bank account sometimes. You know, California's expensive, but yes, all, I know the feeling. You know the feeling. Always a pleasure. Keep up the good work and uh, best. Thanks, you, man. Best to you and your fam. Good to see you. Thanks for all the support, man. Really appreciate it. Talk to you soon.